we dream in our waking moments and walk in our sleep. Nathaniel Hawthorne, The Scarlet Letter. Welcome to Salem. The air is crisp and has a chilling bite to it as I stand in the heart of Salem. We're standing in front of the Salem uh, Witch Museum and across the street is Roger, the, the colonist who started this town. And it's this very town that hysteria arose because girls had nightmares of possession and, and curses of a, by a witch's hand. It's very fascinating uh, that accusations came and gone and, and was thrown across the colony and you never knew when you might be accused of being a witch. Not only was it women that were accused of being a witch, but it was also men who were also accused of being a witch. Anyone could be accused of being a witch your dog, your neighbor, your friend, your family even. And it all started because these girls had these night terrors in the middle of the night. And all they could blame it on was the hand of a witch. It's interesting. Now, 20 people died during the witch trials, during this witch hunt that started here. And uh, I'm thinking of them as I stand in this kind of cold fall morning in front of this very building that was built in 1692. Accusations of witchcraft started to tear through the colony. Was it all a misunderstanding? Or were the colonists experiencing a run-in with the devil at the doing of witches within the colony? This was Minister Paris's rhetoric as he preached in church, and that was one of the causes of the Salem Troubles. Paris was a man who echoed the hysteria first with his fire and brimstone rhetoric of witchcraft to explain why his children were having trouble fits into the night. Stand against the wiles of the devil, for he waits beyond every corner. Repent, or your soul will burn in eternity. Paranoia spread like wildfire. Family members turned against each other, and violence spread throughout the town. More girls claimed to be overcome by the devil. You're a witch! No, I'm not a witch! You're the witch! It is as if love thy neighbor as thyself was completely thrown out with the baby in the bathwater.
Here is the very spot of Richard Moore's grave site, who was one of the passengers on the Mayflower, a pilgrim of the New World. This is the only known grave site of a Mayflower passenger. Richard died at the age of 84. So I'm here at the memorial for the 20 people who died uh, for the claims of witchcraft. Uh, Bridget Bishop being the very first one to be hanged. Uh, and it says uh, June 10th, 1692, she was hanged for the crimes of witchcraft. And again, the courts and the court hearings were very hysterical. Uh, the girls who were making the claims were fainting in court and making a huge show <laughs> uh, cl with their claims of witchcraft. And at the time, this type of accusation, these, this type of fainting in a courtroom was evidence that witchcraft was being made. And so she was the first to hang because of this. Look where the Hawthorne Hotel stands. It once was Bridget Bishop's apple orchard. Women were accused of witchcraft because of their unpopular status fueled by property line disputes within the community. The tendency of her fate and fortune had been to set her free. The Scarlet Letter was her passport into regions where other women dared not to tread. Shame, despair, solitude, these had been her teachers, stern and wild ones, and they had made her strong, but taught her much amiss. Nathaniel Hawthorne, The Scarlet Letter. So throughout history, there's been many witch hunts and uh, we still have witch hunts today. Uh, but the thing is, is that, you know, most of the people who are victims of these witch hunts are people who are poor, on the fringes of society, or just plainly disliked in the community they live in. We're standing out front of the House of Seven Gables, which was one of the homes that Nathaniel Hawthorne uh, grew up in around this area in Salem. And he wrote The Scarlet Letter and The House of Seven Gables. So The Scarlet Letter, you know, really stood out to me when I was growing up uh, and read it while I was in high school. The fact that a woman who was on the fringes of society um, really threatened the townspeople of the colony she lived in. And, you know, it really goes back to uh, the Salem witch trials and how the 20 people, innocent people, most likely, uh, who, who were victims to the witch hunt of the, the new colony and the new world. I laughed in bitterness and agony of heart at the contrast between what I seem and what I am. The governor of the colony, Sir William Phillips, started to actively cover up the witch trials during the fall of 1692, banning any publication about the witch hunts. Books were burned, but recently, historians found the exact location of where the witches were publicly hanged 
execution fashion, which was lost in time due to the cover-up. The 14 of the 20 prosecuted for the crimes of witchcraft were women. Unfortunately, innocent lives were taken unrightfully. Throughout history, thousands of women have been victims of witch hunts. So now we're standing in front of the John Ward house. This was built around 1684, somewhere around there. He was a leather worker and actually this isn't the original spot that the house uh, was built on. They actually moved it in 1910, which is very odd, but it's still intact and it's such a gorgeous black painted house. I think they painted it, they keep it up to date with the paint, I guess, but uh, I love the door, it's so cool, and uh, that old style. And as you can see, there's a, a chimney a stack right there, chimney stack, and two pitched roofs, very typical for the architecture of the day. Oh my god, I, I think this place is haunted. So uh, I was looking at Google Images for this location and there was totally a picture of a ghost. If you looked in there in the window, I, I highly recommend if you come to Salem, look in the windows of these old houses. You know, there's no one uh, living in them. They're completely vacant. But if you just look in the window, you might see a ghost. So right now we are standing outside of the house where Hocus Pocus was filmed and Allison's parents were having a big extravagant party for Halloween and Max crashes the party and ropes her all in into this crazy witch hunt with Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker running around town uh, as a witch. Uh, I loved that movie as a kid and it's so surreal to come to the location where it was filmed. Now they're gearing up to shoot Hocus Pocus 2 and I'm so excited to see what they do. Unfortunately, this time around they're not shooting in Salem, but they'll pretend like it's Salem. But unfortunately, they're not shooting here this time around. Salem is now a quaint little town with beautiful historical buildings of the past, but we will never understand the reasoning for these types of hasty actions taking place of yesteryear. I don't think that the young women who accused all of those folks understood the magnitude of their actions, or maybe they did in a grim way. The girls played their neighbors with a terrible game of witch hunting that turned Salem upside down for years. We as humans tend to fear the unknown or the unseen, but to what ends will we take actions based on solely fear of the unknown? Are fear-based decisions really helpful to society? As we reflect on the decisions of the past, we must never forget the lives taken in which will forever stain our hearts, known as the Salem Witch Trials.